Uh, since starting this initiative, we've really had an opportunity to talk to a lot of people in the field. We've really spent the last year um, talking to colleagues uh, from here in LA, across the country, and in, in Europe with more than 100 people uh, practicing stakeholders, really. And this meeting is really the culmination of that process. It's important to us in all of our work that uh, we uh, hear from practitioners. I think one of the challenges uh, and one of the things we learn uh, about uh, by being the Getty is we have the resources to move quickly uh, and we can quickly make big mistakes. And uh, the most important thing we can do is listen to people and practice and engage them and with them formulate our priorities and formulate our activities. And so it's extraordinarily uh, important that you're with us here today and with our team as we identify and finalize those priorities for what is likely to be a, a decade long initiative. So we're really delighted you're here. Um, let me uh, thank a couple of people. Um, work like this doesn't happen easily, as you know. Um, uh, Jean-Marie Tutanico and Susan McDonald have been working on this initiative for a number of years. And it is Susan McDonald who is the project director and has very, very ably uh, led this initiative since its uh, launching last year. And you'll all have had a, a great amount of time uh, spent with her, I know. But indeed, her team, Kyle Normandon, uh, Gail Ostergren, Sarah Powers, uh, Jeffrey Cody, and our graduate intern, uh, Luisa Relensmann, have worked really hard to bring us here together for this two days of uh, work, and it is work. Uh, enjoyable work, I think, but uh, hard work nonetheless. And um, with that, I just want to say thank you again for joining us. Thank you for keeping us out of the echo chamber, and thank you for uh, guiding us along the way. And with that, I will introduce uh, Susan McDonald, uh, the chair of this morning's session, and again, the director and project director for our Conserving Modern Architecture Initiative. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Um, yes, good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm so excited to see you all here. And I'm so looking forward to what we hope is a very invigorating and fruitful and fun few days. Norman, it is going to be fun. Um, our aspiration here is simple, um, to identify what we think are the critical issues uh, affecting the conservation of modern heritage or some of the barriers that are affecting our ability to be truly successful to try and identify responses that would address these challenges, to address um, and to identify very specific actions and discuss who might be the people able to take some of those things forward and then to prioritise them. We hope that, as Tim said, this will not only help us at the GCI develop our program as we move forward in a way that is strategic and effective and um, in areas where we know that we can have the most impact with our own resources, but that the colloquium can also um, help to forge working relationships with others that are present here and between you all as well, um, so that you can take on actions that best suit your own organisations. Uh, and of course, it's really important that we're not duplicating efforts because we all are uh, are suffering uh, in this particular climate with declining government funding uh, with scarce resources for heritage conservation. So I think it's true to say that um, this area is not exactly a new area. I think we've had 25 years of practice. And when we look back and evaluate uh, all the things that have happened, and there's a lot to celebrate, um, one might assume that um, this area of conservation was uh, very um, successful and uh, modern heritage was being well loved and well restored. Um, and I think one of the things that is interesting about it is it is the area where the past and um, the present collide. We've got access to information, one would assume, in ways that we've never had before. Um, we can understand why places were built, how they were built, how they were conceived. Um, and I think that we have got a huge body of information that has been accrued over that time, but we still have a lot of challenges. Um, I think it's true to say that we haven't got widespread recognition and support for the conservation of the variety of heritage places that represent um, 
the, the legacy of the 20th century. We don't necessarily have a shared vision for how to uh, approach its conservation and a methodology for doing so. And I think it's therefore timely to reflect on the practice of conserving modern architecture and how it's advanced so that we can work out where future efforts could be best concentrated. So these were the sort of issues that prompted um, the Getty Conservation Institute's Conserving Modern Architecture initiative um, that, as Tim said, was launched last year. And when we were trying to think about um, how we could contribute to this area of practice, our very preliminary research identified some very commonly cited and interrelated challenges, which is this issue of lack of recognition and protection, this problem with methodology, uh, these questions about lifespan, durability, technical and material challenges, um, and this issue of obsolescence um, that is affecting buildings from this era particularly. Um, obviously, the limited palimpsest of time, uh, which enables us to assess uh, the contribution of modern heritage within time, um, impacts how conservation is approached and gives rise to some of those first two challenges at least. So we've made a couple of assumptions over the, the next um, two days so that we could kind of jump straight in. And the first one is that although at the Getty it's true to say our interest is really in uh, built heritage, um, that heritage of this era represents, there are many different types of heritage. There are landscapes, there are industrial sites, there are historic urban areas, there are buildings. So I think our assumption is that over the two days there are many of you who bring experience from different parts or diff dealing with different types of heritage places. You actually represent <clears throat> private practice, non-profit, government, uh, your engineers, architects, archaeologists, material scientists, historians. Uh, so we've got a huge range of professional professions represented here uh, in the room. We also um, decided to kind of avoid perhaps uh, dealing with specific ter terminology around questions of modernism and modernity. Um, we've used these terms really to kind of broadly represent the shift in society in the late 19th century um, that sort of characterised society and culture ever since then, that gave rise to new forms of uh, uh, artistic expression, new forms um, of... Uh, an, uh, new forms of in, in building and planning and new ways of living and working um, and are obviously reflected in the heritage that we're all keen to um, protect and conserve. We've also assumed a high level of knowledge and experience um, so that we can actually really get to the responses quite quickly uh, and, uh, and so that was uh, something that we were careful to ensure that we could start with a sort of certain assumed level of knowledge. Uh, this idea of bringing together a group like this is something that's been floating around for quite a while. Uh, on a personal level, it's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Um, and uh, shortly after I arrived at the Getty uh, and we were starting to think about this, uh, this issue of, of modern heritage here, in talking to colleagues at APT and Docomomo and ICOMOS, there was this discussion about whether it, would be, whether it was timely to actually have such a meeting uh, because we seemed to... Um, there was a little bit of frustration about, despite all the progress that has been made, that we've sort of lost momentum in a more strategic sense uh, and that we needed to perhaps stop and, and have a look at uh, where we've been and what we still need to do um, collectively. Um, in talking particularly to um, colleagues at APT, David Fixler and Tom Jester, we started to noodle on this idea of such a meeting a few years ago. Actually, I think it was about four or five years ago we were talking about the other day. And, and I know we've had these discussions with many other groups. So we're very pleased that we at the Getty were able to actually um, to achieve this. And, and here we all are. Um, I want to just spend a few minutes talking about how we've planned the next two days. Uh, and I know you've all had some background papers, so you've had a chance to have a look at it. So you'll have some idea of that. Um, we have developed the program around four themes, which of course are interrelated, um, but they have attempted to identify specific issues for conserving modern heritage. And we could have cut the pie in many different ways, but this seemed to be a useful framework for our discussions over the next two days. So today is all about setting the scene for our workshop sessions tomorrow. Um, each of the four background papers that have developed for each theme are going to be presented in a slightly shorter form, and hopefully you've all had a chance to read those. Um, the case study, the, the um, background papers will be further elucidated by two case studies that uh, intended to flesh out 
some of the issues raised or to demonstrate responses to some of these particular issues. So we're hoping that today you will have an opportunity to kind of sit back, reflect, hopefully there'll be lots of ideas that come out of these papers and presentations so that you're ready for day two. So tomorrow <clears throat> is when everyone uh, really gets to work and we have taken the liberty of dividing you into groups that we thought best suited your own interests and experience. If you do feel that you're really in the wrong group uh, and you, you um, feel that you might like to be in a different group, if you could perhaps come and see Kyle and I by lunchtime today, so during the break or at lunchtime some, at, some <clears throat> at some time, we will see if we can uh, rearrange things. We do know that <clears throat> most of you have got interests beyond the, the working group that you're in. But tomorrow afternoon is the opportunity for everybody to participate in the outcomes from each one of, the, of these groups. There'll be time for us to have further discussion on that. So tomorrow morning, you're going to be working in your groups. Um, and what we're asking you to do is to agree the most important issues that need to be addressed in order to advance the field. Uh, what we want to spend most of our time doing is um, developing solutions. And our moderators are going to be pushing you to develop responses to these challenges and identify specific actions. And then you are going to, as a group, try and prioritise these. Each group has a moderator and a rapporteur. Um, and these um, uh, hardworking people will be spending their lunchtime tomorrow working these, uh, the conclusions from your groups into presentations that will be given tomorrow afternoon. So in the afternoon, each group is going to be presenting their results, um, and I'm emphasising results, um, and, um, and then there's going to be an opportunity for everyone to participate and comment on the work of each group, as I said. Then collectively, uh, all of us are going to work to prioritise these, and we're going to attempt to draw some conclusions. After that, the Getty is going to uh, write all of this up, and um, provide it to all of you. And eventually we'll have a report that will be available on our website. And we'll, we'll explain tomorrow a little bit more how you're getting to your groups and where you go and all those kind of logistical things. Um, on Friday, uh, some of you are signed up to do a tour of the Eames House and the Getty Villa. Uh, if you have any questions about that or need to talk to anyone about it, again, you could talk to Kyle or um, Sarah. I hope you're going to have some time to enjoy the Getty. You'll have time to visit the museum. There's a little bit of time. We've tried to keep the lunches fairly uh, lengthy, so you've got time to perhaps have a wander around. There are some great exhibitions on. You can visit the shop, and your badges is worth money. are worth money. These badges get you a 10% discount in the bookshop. Uh, so the bookshop will be open at lunchtime uh, today and tomorrow. I wouldn't advise trying to go there during the breaks because we're going to be keeping to time. But you will have time during um, lunchtime tomorrow and perhaps at the end of the day. So I wanted to thank you so much for all coming along here. Um, we're really grateful that you, could all, you were all willing to, to be here and to contribute. Many of you have come from a long way away. I know you're very busy people. Um, I'm just really thrilled to see so many great minds in the room, so many people who've made already really significant contributions to this area of conservation and practice, um, great heroes of mine. Um, we've got a few of my own heroes that are missing, but you know most of you are in the room, and it's very, very special for us to, to, to see you all here. So I just want to thank you all for, for making the time to join us here. I have a couple of housekeeping things. Um, I just would like to introduce the Getty team so that if you need anything, uh, you get lost, you're not sure about what you're meant to be doing, you're not sure about your groups, you've got questions about the tours that you can ask any of these people. So I'm just going to ask them to stand up and wave. So Jim Marie Tonico, our associate director, is here. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Um, Kyle Normandon, who uh, is our project um, manager of this whole initiative and largely uh, arranged this whole meeting. Um, uh, Gail Ostergren, who is a historian who is working in our team, who is, has also been working hard behind the scenes on this. Jeff Cody, uh, who's also um, uh, been involved in helping us conceive this. And Sarah Powers, are you in the room? Sarah, who I think most of you have met by email and has just... Uh, been working on the logistics like you would not believe. There's Sarah, if you need anything. Okay, um, lavatories at the back of the hall to the left. Um, the break is going to be just outside here in the foyer. 
Lunch today is in the private dining room. I forgot to check. Is that right? Private dining room. And we are going to be showing you where that is. So when the lunch break happens, we'll all filter out here and people will be directing you up to the private dining room, which, if you get lost, is above the restaurant. Um, tomorrow morning, we will be having a group photograph. So, you know, if that means you wear something different, that's when the photo is happening. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and hopefully it's not going to be raining because we need to do it in the morning before the museum um, uh, is um, open. We are videoing today and tomorrow's events um, and it will be online. So uh, we, um, you know, that, that this, the, the video is happening right now. So you will actually be able to view and listen to all of these things again. So... Now I would, oh yes, we're ahead of time. Yes, good, more time for questions. So now I would like to uh, introduce some, uh, some important people that are engaged in key international organisations who um, have been working for many years on this particular subject. Um, we have a lot of people, I know many of you are members of many organisations, APT, Docomomo, uh, ICOMOS, um, uh, man, uh, there's a whole lot of people, uh, Tiki, um, what else, I forgot, there's a lot of different organisations that uh, you are all members of, in fact I was thinking we could almost have a competition to see who's the member of most organisations because a lot of people <laughs> are members of quite a few different ones. Um, but I would like to invite Anna Tostois, who is the president of Docomomo International, um, to say a few words. Um, Anna, I'm sure many of you know, is uh, from Portugal and um, is a professor in the, um, in the ISC um, Technical University of Lisbon, where she specialises in 20th century architectural and urban history. Anna, welcome. Good morning. Dear Tim Wallen, dear Susan McDonnell, dear Kyle, Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank in the name of Docomomo the invitation to participate in this colloquium, namely Susan, with whom I share as Docomomo president the interest, and Kyle of course, the interest in modern movement documentation and conservation. This was the label defined 25 years ago that Docomomo pursue today focused on conservation and reuse practices. Docomomo is a worldwide network, as you know, of architects, engineers, architectural historians, preservationists and educationists interested in the significant history of modern movement and its actuality. The aim is to document and conserve buildings and sites of the worldwide modern movement heritage in contributing with ideas for a sustainable future. Docomomo was initiated at the Eidhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands in 88 as a small circle of European architects and architectural historians uh, on the belief that the conservation of modern architecture presented at the time an urgent challenge. A challenge that required the fostering of swift interaction and collaboration across boundaries. At the time, some Dutch architects were just witnessing the first signs of the urge of a wider international awareness about preserving 20th century architecture, what we called our young monuments. The modern movement architecture denomination question implies to look at space and time issues. It appears impossible to establish either a particular period or a particular region. It appears Let's say, was it the Eric period that starts, today I say in Wroclaw, in 99, with the Max Berg Jahrhundert Halle, or the Fagus factory in uh, uh, 11, and lasted until the mid 30s? Or was Frank Lloyd Wright innovations, or Schindler, or Neutre in your fantastic LA heritage, which is perhaps the most fantastic uh, private houses 
uh, universe of modern movement here in LA, or the glorious 50s and 60s when modern architecture came to bloom in Great Britain, Brazil, and Japan, for instance, demonstrating the great potential of the symbiosis of Western influences and non-Western civilization that has frequently resulted in a mastery over the original source of inspiration, or vice versa. Uh, it is an universal movement with a variety of different interpretations. Rather than style, the modern movement, it's a way of thinking. Docomomo considers it as an ongoing project, including restoration actions and re-adaptative reuse interventions and values the innovative character of the modern movement according to its social, technical and aesthetical dimensions. Docomomo main goals have been to bring the significance of modern movement to the attention of public, authorities, professionals, etc. Uh, to promote the recording of the works of the modern movement movement, including a register, drawings, photographers, archives, and other documents, fostering the development of appropriate techniques and methods of conservation and disseminate this knowledge throughout the professions. Apart from the work done by the International Secretariat, which is the hinge pin of the organization, Docomomo is operating via international committees of specialists, registers, technology, theory and education, and urbanism and landscape. Docomomo, Docomomo ISC registers was created to engage national, regional chapters in the documentation of modern buildings and sites co collecting all around the, the, the world in order to um, create an inventory of modern architecture, including both outstanding individual buildings and everyday examples. The mission of the ISCT technology is to promote documentation and conservation through studies and research into technology and into the material qualities of modern architecture. All the committees work with seminars and uh, documentation and publication on registers and the technology committee, for instance, organizes uh, several seminars with proceedings. The last one was in Karlsruhe two years ago in, Bro in Brno in the Tugendhat House and Viborg and so on. The ISC Urban Landscape is uh, to promote research on um, these ensembles and an environment uh, universe and the education and theory has organized uh, since 2006 uh, the student workshop during the Dokomomo conference, the first one in uh, Atakoi in Istanbul. Um, then in Rotterdam, then in Mexico, in August in Finland, and now we are working for Seoul in Korea. The Docomomo Journal is the tool to circulate well target information over the world and to link Docomomo members, keeping a good balance, I hope you agree, between architects and architectural historians, the aim is to publish technical and theoretical essays documenting the modern movement life and reuse as a sustainable tool for the future of the environment. The Docomom International is committed with reuse practices, with restoration, with readaptative re rehabilitation, stressing to bring significance and to disseminate good practices. So, conserving modern architecture is the brand of Docomomo since its creation. The effort is placed in the most important and innovative experience in the field. Last year, Docomomo Journal, thanks to the collaboration of the Get Institute, published a paper on Imps House restoration, and of course you have in your library, but this is a special gift for the Getty. Um, and an issue was also dedicated to modern and sustainable question, publishing case studies, uh, namely Le Lignon, a successful rehabilitation process conducted in Switzerland, in Geneva, for instance. 
with the leading of the Docomomo Switzerland chair and members conducted by the universities is now about to be finished and astonishing work bringing together the knowledge on the field. It's the encyclopedia. So we must put everything together. That's why we are all here answering to Susan McDonnell and Kyle um, challenge. Uh, and concerning education, I believe that we really must stress all the experience you have here in Colombia, the Getty Research Center receiving young students and applications to uh, work on this field. And it's uh, really important to uh, transfer and to networking and making lobby also. Uh, for instance, from my school, we are now working uh, and supporting as consultancy uh, the, uh, let's say, renovation of the big Gulbank and Auditorium here, my recent work on the field for your library too, but this auditorium is still under construction and under working and perhaps we need your help uh, to fulfill the best solutions in these questions of renovation and updating works from the 50s to uh, be able to answer to 21st century exigencies. The innovative character of modern movement uh, is a challenge to traditional conservation approaches. Professionals must face nowadays resources and comfort exigencies, namely the need to answer to the energetic performance issues. This is a problem really, really tough in, in, in Europe nowadays. We must not forget Rainer Banham, architecture of the well-tempered environment. I believe really inspired by LA atmosphere and life because conservation of modern heritage is a responsibility, a duty, a challenge for this sustainable future. Reflect on how the practice of conserving modern architecture has advanced and identify where future efforts should be concentrated are some of the aims that Susan put very clearly on her paper. So, the networking of experts must be intensified, exchange experience case studies. Architects and engineering education must be redef redefined, creating research lines focused on conservation, profiting from the interest of many students, exchange information and knowledge between universities, research centers, agencies. Involve entrepreneurs, industry, because conservation and also readaptive reuse has been identified as a field for the future, which means materials and technology know-how and also industrial development. We need to approach both public opinion makers and politicians. 25 years after the creation of Tokomomo, some advances have been made. Modern architecture is recognized as a worldwide heritage, building sites, houses, places, cities. Exquisite restorations have been achieved, just to remember the Tugendhat recently uh, finished. But also some intelligent readaptive projects have shown the possibility of uh, ongoing future for this heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is coming to organize ourselves and our, your invitation. It's the sign of this. The ones like us that are committed with the conservation of modern in order to improve our skills and to bring together this know-how and transfer also. A concert effort, as you say, Susan, is needed to apply our efforts. That's why, which means that the Getty Conservation Institute is now focusing some of the great efforts on this modern movement line, I wish to thank the Getty Conservation Institute for organizing this colloquium, and I'm sure we will have intense debates and identify an agenda and find results to achieve focus research lines in order to apply, transfer and transform. Thank you so much and I hope 
I made it in 10 minutes as I wish. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, um, Anna. Uh, I'd like to now introduce Sheridan Burke, um, who is the president of ICOMOS International's Scientific Committee on 20th Century Heritage. Um, Sheridan is a conservation planner at Godden Mackay Logan Heritage Consultants uh, in Australia, and um, will be also talking this morning on the Opera House. Sheridan. Thank you. We come together here over the next couple of days as educators, as experts, as scholars, as, I guess, passionate enthusiasts, because we hope that we're going to be able to secure a future for our respective modern heritages. They're probably all quite different as we sit here in the room today. The Getty Conservation Institute has generously invited us all here so that we can contribute to this initiative to share our efforts, to share what we've done in research and practice development through case studies and four thematic and somewhat provocative papers. I hope we get a bit of stimulation from those. As the president of the 20th Century Committee of ICOMOS, I'm very grateful to the Getty's leadership at this point in time, because I think around the world now, there are very, very few organizations that could undertake this kind of strategic alliance. Very few organizations could broker the kind of collaborations that we hope we'll be talking about over the next couple of days. It's very hard internationally to identify what the strategic research and training needs are, but more difficult is to identify what the priorities are. And of course, that's what our objective is at the end of tomorrow. As the president of the 20th Century Committee, I'm really looking for outcomes, outcomes that enable us to focus our efforts and not to work uh, in diversity. And I guess that's whether that's going to be in the creation and dissemination of information, that might be one thing that we do, whether it's about promotion or interpretation initiatives, or whether it's about capacity building through training and education. Whatever it is, I think we should be very, very outcomes focused. I hope we don't spend too much time debating whether or not modern heritage needs yet another charter or yet another conservation philosophy. And I hope we don't spend too much time regretting the lack of recognition um, or the lifespan and technical challenges that all of these places face. I think it would be wonderful if we could actually start from a core belief in values-based conservation processes and move on from there so that we can quickly get to determining what the priority actions we need to take what, what sort of partnerships we need to form to build that strategic momentum that Susan mentioned. It would be great if we could uh, sort of share experience and ideas uh, about protecting the yet to be loved. That was a, a term that's in Susan's paper and I rather like it because I'm not sure whether we are actually ready yet to, or prepared yet perhaps, perhaps we're ready but not prepared to actually conserve modern heritage and I throw that as a, as a challenge to the minds here. I'm sure all of, all of you know uh, what ICOMOS is. It's an NGO, it has 101 national committees around the world and 11,000 members, and 28 scientific committees, of which the 20th century is one of the newest, being formed in 2005. Uh, when we formed that committee, we looked very carefully to make sure that we weren't running in, in parallel or overlapping the tasks of other groups that were already very active in the field, Docomomo, MAN in particular. Um, we wanted to look for partnerships and arrangements with people like UIA and so forth. So we decided that we'd work very closely on five projects, and I, I'd like just to introduce those to you today, some of which you'll probably be aware of. The very first one was a very, very ambitious program to try and develop a thematic history framework for the 20th century. Very, very challenging. There's not really a comprehensive or broad thematic study of the historical development of heritage places in the 20th century at the moment, which goes much beyond architecture. The 20th Century Committee of ICOMOS is looking well beyond architecture, it's looking to all forms of building sites and places. And I think this lack of a thematic framework is rather hampering the identification and the comparative analysis of places at a local level, a national level, and certainly at a world level where ICOMOS is very much involved. The difficulty is that nominations and, and selections are somewhat uncontextualised, and comparative analyses are therefore very difficult to sustain. So in 2008, the 20th Century Committee began to prepare a comprehensive analysis supported by the Getty Conservation Institute. We had a meeting here in, in May a couple of years ago where we identified what we felt the key historic drivers were and identified a few building and functional typologies which represented these kind of drivers. 
Um, this program uh, project has been published and circulated widely. I don't know if there are copies available of the, uh, of the uh, publication, but certainly it's available on the internet. Uh, and the next stage will be to commission uh, actually the writing up and thorough analytical research of that project. The second project that we're working on was the drafting of international guidelines for the conservation of 20th century monuments and sites. Uh, there was a very key question that fronted the committee when we started as to whether, in fact, we even needed particular principles. There is division within the committee about whether this was necessary. Nevertheless, we moved forward uh, and, and sort of worked this through over the last couple of years. The most urgent guideline that was felt to be needed about conservation for 20th century places was about intervention in 20th century architecture. Uh, and uh, so we developed through a series of workshops and a meeting in Madrid a text which is called the, uh, has a rather long title, it's called The Intervention Approaches for the 20th Century Architectural Heritage and it's colloquially known as the Madrid Document. The text's been circulated internationally, again it's on the, uh, the committee's website, uh, and it's been translated now into seven languages. I think that's probably the demonstration of the fact that it was something that was very needed, is something that is needed, because there are a number of, of countries and cultural groups where there is no generalised conservation process, so this certainly gives some guidelines in that, in that absence. The third project that we've been working on, uh, and this is one which we very much welcome more contribution to, is that we're developing an electronic platform for disseminating benchmark practice standards. It's called the Heritage Toolkit, and it's up on the 20th Century Committee website. The idea is not to actually write or create documents, but simply to link them and to put up major case studies and examples of things that are best practice. So it's a really good way of disseminating this information through hot links or through um, uh, different, kind, different methods of putting them together. It's there now. We're looking forward to, uh, to more contributions. The um, fourth project that we've been working on, and it's been a, a very, uh, really right from the start of the 20th Century Committee, is providing analysis and advice on modern heritage as world heritage. ICOMOS is an advisor to UNESCO on cultural heritage matters, and increasingly there are modern heritage sites being brought towards world heritage listing. One of the first questions that we were asked to look at was to try and give some advice about what was an acceptable level of change in a modern site. Now, it's interesting that that question isn't posed to what is an acceptable level of change for an archaeological site. It's being asked about modern sites. And I think it sort of indicates, I guess, the nervousness that the World Heritage Committee has approached modern sites. It's been very slow to put modern sites onto the register, but there's an increasing number now, and there's certainly a lot on the tentative lists. So we need to get a handle on this um, very quickly. The 20th Century Committee has been also looking at the way in which serial site nominations might be developed. You'll all be aware that there's currently one for Le Corbusier that's been up and down a few times, is looking a little bit more positive at the present time, but there's also the Frank Lloyd Wright nomination coming forward. There should be one for the Japanese modernists and probably a few more. We need to get those some processes and some skills developed about how these things should be handled. And finally, the 20th Century Committee has been taking on an advocacy role. This is something that we do somewhat reluctantly, but nevertheless, it is necessary. Um, from the very inception of the 20th Century Committee, there was a lot of pressure to take on this role. Uh, meeting in Moscow on the occasion of an international conference called Heritage at Risk, the Preservation of 20th Century Architecture and World Heritage in 2006, the committee uh, drafted the Moscow Declaration on the Preservation of 20th Century Cultural Heritage, which was co-signed by Dr. Momo and UIA. The declaration appealed to Russian political and professional organisations to act with urgency to support the conservation of buildings of the Russian avant-garde movement and proposed to initiate international cooperation in the field of historical and architectural investi investigations with the city of Moscow. But still, these extraordinary buildings continue to deteriorate. A more formal and a more targeted process seemed to be needed. And so the 20th Century Committee developed a thing called Heritage Alerts, which is a template that enables us to be able to really credibly assess the threats to individual sites. We've also developed a very effective uh, electronic information distribution system to focus our responses and to focus media attention. And although since 2008 we've had about 20 requests um, for these kind of heritage alert actions, most of them have been able to be dealt with quite positively through meetings and correspondence. 
Some of them have had to have major media campaigns associated with them, the Gunnar Asplund Design City Library in Stockholm and more recently the Central Government Office's West Wing in Hong Kong have been two particular cases, both of which are now being actively conserved and adaptively reused, the threat of their demolition being averted, and I think largely due to the international intervention in those particular cases. So it's my hope today that the colloquium will be, will be a vital foundation block for the process of reducing the number of heritage alerts that we all need to deal with by more effectively protecting the yet to be loved. If we all feel that we are doing everything that we can, jointly and severally, let's put that aside for the moment and, and start the dialogue about what we can be doing together, what we can be doing in new partnerships that are in the room today that we don't yet know about. Thank you to the Getty for having us and thank you from the 20th Century Committee for being here. Thanks, Sherry. Um, I'd like to invite uh, David Fixler uh, to the podium. David is the co-chair of um, the APT, um, uh, International's Modern Committee, uh, and is an architect, a principal at EYP, uh, specialising in the rehabilitation of uh, modern structures. David. Good morning. And uh, I want, as did Sherry and... Um, and uh, first to thank deeply uh, the Getty for having us all here, for inviting us here. And thanks, Susan, in particular, for the little shout out about our, our discussions that began four or five years ago about trying to foster some kind of an event. Because I, to, uh, I think that when the APT Technical Committee on Modern Heritage was formed in 2006 uh, uh, with Tom Jester, my colleague who is, who is here, um, we, one of the first things that we, we realized is that the, the, there was, there were, there was so, many, so many things going in so many different directions. Uh, and the need to uh, convene some kind of something like this, although it seemed to be uh, in, in the minds of many sort of rehashing what we've already done and already know, I think that uh, I think what we've come to realize is that uh, as, the, as the expansion of this discipline increases, as we begin to really grasp uh, the, the, the challenges of, of working with, with modern buildings. And of course, there's far more modern heritage than there is of anything else, as we're all aware. So we're dealing with, with issues of scale and volume uh, that are far beyond anything that, uh, that people in the fields of conservation uh, had, had ever dealt with before. And I think, so we're, we're, we're absolutely thrilled to be here. And we think that um, uh, from the point of view, uh, from APT's point of view, as, an, as an, an organization focused on conservation, that there's much to be learned here. Uh, both from the technical side, but uh, also very much also from the education and training side. APT was founded uh, in the late 1960s. It's, it's been around for over 40 years now. And uh, it has actually been an organization that, uh, that is focusing on conservation. Um, it, it was one of the first groups really to bring the alert, to sound, start to sound the alarm about modern heritage. At about the same time that Dokomomo was formed, 1989, uh, was the, 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 the first paper that was published by Michael Lynch that dealt with, the, with, with modern buildings and starting to think about what are we going to do with these things, and particularly looking at the material aspects because it was already, of course, quite, quite, of course, quite evident at that point how fast some of these buildings were failing and how many of the traditional ideas about how we conserve materials and how we look at uh, things from the, from the very small scale to the very large scale were going to be very different. Um, this, uh, this interest uh, persisted, and I, I want to particularly point out, although it wasn't specifically an APT event, was certainly there was a lot of APT participation in the 1995 uh, Preserving the Recent Past Conference, which was organized largely by Deborah Slayton, who is also here today. But then also in the 2000 conference, which actually was held as an APT event, it was, that was the APT annual meeting in Philadelphia in 2000. And both of these produced a significant body of, uh, of literature and thought, which I think have been, have provided great foundation stones going forward, a, a tremendous bodies of, uh, of information of, of both a technical and philosophical nature uh, from which we have been able to move ourselves forward. Uh, one of the first things that uh, Tom and I did uh, upon forming the committee was to, uh, was to establish, set up a workshop which we, uh, which we convened here in Los Angeles in the spring of 2009, uh, rather in the fall of 2009, uh, and it was called uh, Modern Heritage Pro Progress, Priorities, and Prognosis. Susan was a part of that panel. 
uh, and Michael McClelland, who is also here as a part of, a part of that panel. And, and I think what, what we were trying to do there and what this committee is trying to do is to really be, be, be able to take the traditional uh, conservation community, because I think with APT, you have a body of people who more, more so than perhaps uh, have become involved with Docomomo and Icomos, come straight out of the traditional conservation community. And in a way, what the, what the modern uh, committee has been, has been trying to do over, over its, the course of its lifetime is, is to um, broadcast the, 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 the kinds of uh, concerns that we have about modern heritage and draw on the tremendous base of technical and educational knowledge that is present uh, in the APT membership in order to, to form the best synthesis. This, this workshop, though, I think what, what, what largely came out of that was, uh, was, was the need for exactly the kind of symposium that we are all gathered here today to have, because the, uh, the, 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 there were a, a sort of lack of common understanding, and I particularly will focus, even though I know we are, we are not here to create a new philosophy, I think that there are refinements that need to be done to that part of it, and APT, uh, as much as Docomomo and Icomos, I think want, need to be a, a, a part of what that means. But also, I think, to focus again on, on education and training and the, uh, the idea of how we are disseminating knowledge uh, on the broadest aspect about what the modern movement was, why it mattered, and why the, uh, the particular kinds of conservation challenges that were posed by the modern movement, how these things can dovetail philosophically with the, uh, with, with, with the need to make these places truly sustainable uh, for the future. And, and sustainable, more than being just an environmental concern, is a practical concern. Since we are dealing with heritage on such a vast scale, uh, there, there is the, the issue of adaptation, of sensitive reuse, of introducing design uh, as, as, as a discipline into conservation, I think, is something that we, we have to pay much more active attention to uh, with modern heritage than we had uh, in the past. Um, we, have a, uh, we are going to be doing a workshop on finishes on modern metals uh, at the upcoming APT conference in, in New York uh, the, this fall, and uh, Rosa Lowinger, who is also a part of uh, the committee, um, will, be, uh, will be spearheading that. And I also wanted to introduce my other co-chair, who I think is here, although I haven't seen her, Kelly Sutherland McLeod, who was, who was taken over Tom's place uh, in, in, in that role. Uh, I know we are past time, so I'm going to keep my remarks very brief, but again, we are, we are really thrilled to be here. Um, APT, has, as I say, has been at this now for uh, almost as long as, as Docomomo has, and uh, we, we feel that there is, a, there's a, there's a tremendous synergy that could come out of this that, uh, that will benefit us all as architects, uh, conservators, and educators. Thank you.